Hello viewers, this is Wagada Ronald and thank you in advance for accepting to watch this video. Now in this video we are mainly going to go through the solutions the list to the questions I left you with in the previous video and those are questions 11 to 20 of all level UNEP physics 2019. So if you if you have just joined this channel you can just subscribe to my channel and then go to the playlist and look for the video so like we said in the previous lesson the following section consists of objective type questions and you are required to answer either a b c or d so there are four alternatives but you choose one which is correct and when necessary the following constants may be used the acceleration due to gravity will be taken as 10 meters per second squared and the specific heat capacity of water will be taken as 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So now we shall go to question 11. Question 11 says, which one of the following statements about, about sound explains how bits are formed? Part A, interference of two sound waves of slightly different frequencies. Then part B, diffraction of sound waves through an opening. And part C, reflection of sound waves as they travel from one medium to another. And part D, reflection of sound waves of bigger amplitudes. So this will be off, this will be off, and also this will be off. Now this word slightly different frequencies and this word interference makes this part correct so we shall take part a to be our correct answer then this question 12 says the following readings were obtained in an experiment to determine the density of a liquid so we are given the mass of an ex of an empty beaker being equal to 20 grams mass of beaker plus liquid being equal to 70 grams and then volume of the liquid used being equal to 60 centimeters cubed using the above data find the density of the liquid in grams per centimeters cubed so part a is 70 plus 20 over 60 part b is 70 minus 20 over 60 then part c 60 over 70 minus 20 and part d 70 over 20, 60 minus 20 so these four options we have to choose one which is correct now let's first see the calculation one which has the mass of the liquid used will be equal to the difference between the two remember this 70 was the mass of the liquid used plus the beaker and this 20 was the mass of the beaker alone so when you subtract you'll get the mass of the liquid used now with only that it implies that this one which has 70 plus 20 goes off and this one which has 60 minus 20 goes off so now we have two options there is b and c both of them have 70 minus 20. now let us see which of the two is correct so next we know that volume of the liquid used is 60 centimeters cubed. Therefore, from the formula that density is equal to mass over volume, we shall say that our mass is 70 minus 20 over the volume which is 60. So when you compare that with our with these options, two remaining options, we shall realize that this one will be off and therefore this will be correct. Therefore, the correct answer was part B so you can mark yourself if you got it correct and if you got it wrong please do corrections then we shall go to part question 13 which of the following determines whether a body will float in a liquid so part A the weight of the body part B the volume of the body part C surface area of the body and part D average density of the body so for of all these ones, this one will determine whether the body floats. So the weight 
this one we can we shall eliminate all those ones and we shall take average density of the body to determine whether the body will float in a liquid therefore the correct answer was part d so we shall now go to question 14 question 14 says the advantage of alternating current over direct current in power transmission are roman 1 frequency is precisely controlled which is correct then roman 2 alternating supply can be stepped up to higher voltages and also that is correct then roman 3 most appliances and electronic devices require alternating current this is not okay so in this case now we shall we have to look for the option which gives these ones to be correct now when you look at part a roman 1 and roman 2 only so this makes this one okay then here roman 2 and roman 3 that means that because we have got one which is correct it means that all these ones will be not okay therefore our answer was part a so now we shall go to question 15 find the power expended when a pump lifts 200 kilograms of water through a vertical height of 0 0.6 meters in one second so part a 33.3 watts part b 120.0 watts part c 333.3 watts and part d 1200.0 watts so let's first go through the sidewalk to see which one is correct first of all we know that power is equal to work done over time taken and because it was lifted vertically it means that work done will be equal to weight in other words work done will be the will be the work done against gravity and given by the formula weight which is now the uh, representing the force and the vertical height which is now representing the distance we know that weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity and height will be represented by h now our mass was 200 kilograms then the acceleration due to gravity remember at the beginning we saw that acceleration due to gravity is a constant and can be taken as 10 meters per second squared so where there is g we shall put there 10 and now h is the vertical height we are given as 0 0.6 meters now when you multiply 200 times 10 times 0 0.6 we, come, we shall come up with 1200 joules now this joules is the unit of si unit of work done but we know that power is equal to work done over time taken so work done is 1200 but time taken was one second so 1200 over 1 will give you 1200 watts now when we go back to our question we shall realize that this this is not okay this is not okay this is not okay but this is okay therefore the correct answer was part b question 16 which one of the following atoms are isotopes part a there is x with mass number sorry atomic number of 8 and mass number of 16 and y with atomic number of 7 and mass number of 16 then part b x with atomic number of 9 and mass number of 19 b y with atomic number of 19 and mass number of 40 c is x with atomic number of 16 and mass number of 30 and y with atomic number of 16 and mass number of 32 and part d x with atomic number of 14 and mass number of 28 and y with atomic number of 16 and mass number of 30. now what we need to remember is that for isotopes the atomic number is the same therefore when we look at this we shall realize that this these two x and y have the same atomic number but these ones the atomic number is not the same therefore they will all be wrong and we take part c as our correct answer so now we shall go to question 17 question 17 says objects viewed through a blue tinted glass appear blue because part a 
glass is transparent part b glass transmits only blue light part d part c glass reflects only blue light and part d objects reflect the blue color so what we should remember is that now this blue tinted glass appears is acts as a blue filter and what do blue filter do for blue filters when white light falls on them all the other colors in the white spectrum are absorbed but that blue but only blue color will be transmitted therefore when we go back to our options we shall realize that glass is transparent is not okay because blue tinted glass is translucent glass transmits only blue color i think this is the correct option this is not okay because when blue light is reflected back it will not reach the observers same applies to that therefore our answer will be answer b now we shall go to question 18 question 18 says a body weighs 250 newtons on earth if the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared find the mass of the body in grams then part a is that part b is this part c is that and part d is that now we have to first go through some side work so first of all we know that weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity but remember weight has been newtons and mass has been kilograms and acceleration due to gravity has been meters per second squared so when you look at this our weight is already in newtons which is correct which is good and our acceleration due to gravity is in meters per second squared therefore when we come and substitute we'll be able to get our m but that m will be in kilograms and when you look at the question they said find the mass of the body in grams now that you have got the mass in kilograms after you change it to grams for you to change it you have to remember that one kilogram is equal to 1000 grams therefore if one kilogram is equal to 1000 grams then for 520 over 9.8 kilograms will be equal to 520 over 9.8 times 1000 grams so when you rearrange you will come up with 520 times 1000 everything divided by 9.8 and when you compare with our given values we shall realize that part a is the one which is correct so part a was correct answer you mark yourself and if it you got it correct wrong you can do corrections now we shall go to question 19 question 19 says which of the following statements about the process of charging an accumulator is or are true so it can be only one statement which is true or more than one which is true so when you look at Roman 1 the positive and negative terminals of the cell are connected to the negative and positive terminals of the charger respectively now this word respectively means you come here and say positive will be connected to negative and negative will be connected to positive this is not correct therefore because positive will be connected to positive and negative will be connected to negative then roman 2 the charging source should have an emf equal to that of the accumulator so this will also not be correct when you go to roman 3 the char charging is done until the relative density of the electrolyte is 1.25 so it's only roman 3 which is correct and therefore when you look at these options you realize that it is part c which is correct therefore our answer will be part c so now we shall go to question 20 which says which one is the correct order of decreasing wavelength of radiations so part a gamma rays followed by x-rays then uv light then visible light infrared and radio waves part b radio waves infrared visible light ultraviolet x-rays and lastly gamma rays in part c x-rays gamma rays visible light ultraviolet infrared and 
radio waves then part d gamma rays x-rays infrared visible light ultraviolet and lastly radio waves so the best thing to do is to first look at the spectrum so this spectrum shows that this is in the direction of increasing frequency and this one decrease increasing wavelength so as well, when frequency increases it means that wavelength reduces therefore the correct order would be from this side going this side so we start with radio waves go to infrared visible light ultraviolet light x-rays and lastly gamma rays so gamma rays should be the last and radio waves should be the first now let's compare with our answer so if you look at part a they have instead started with gamma rays and ended with radio waves so this is a wrong order they have interchanged everything and this part they have started with x-rays which is also not okay so because we have to start with radio waves so all these ones are not okay the only correct one is this one which starts with radio waves then infrared visible light ultraviolet x-rays and lastly gamma rays therefore part b was the correct option So now we have managed to complete the 10 questions I left in the previous assignment and now I'm also going to leave you with 10 more questions for you to try out and these start as follows. So that brings us to the end of this lesson and the next vid in the next video we shall start with the questions I've left you with and we go through them. So tune in next time and please subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed and share to other friends who are in this who have not yet subscribed to this channel so that we all benefit as a family.